how much of the uh, conversation taking place um, there in the Southern Baptist Convention in light of the onslaught of wokeism. I mean, man, uh, there are, uh, and it doesn't, it's not just amongst Baptists. There are woke Reform Baptists. There are a bunch of woke Presbyterians these days. And man, once somebody gets woke, they, they're, they're, they're just, once, once woke, twice broke. And uh, all of a sudden, they just lose foundational discernment skills. And so there are people making suggestions that basically, fundamentally, um, Baptists should abandon their ecclesiology because of the crisis. We've got a crisis. We've got to do something. It, it's called reflexivity. Um, it is a tactic of the left. It is extremely effective. Now that most people are public school educated and um, educated by film and by culture uh, to, re to reflexively respond rather than patiently uh, considering long-term ramifications and functioning on the basis of a consistent worldview, you just knee-jerk reaction. Just do something now. We got to do something now. Uh, and then you use words like, you know, protect people or stop violence or, you, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever floats your boat, whatever's going to make people feel better. Um, you use those terms, even if what you're actually suggesting isn't going to help anybody and is actually going to make the situation worse, which is normally what you're going for. Um, and so that's what we have going on, and that's what we have going on in the SBC. I mean, we've got a good, we've got a good crisis. Can't can't waste the crisis. So, so let's let's change all of our uh, uh, ecclesiology and create a denomination with a hierarchical structure that can control the local churches. Well, if that's where you want to go, just stop calling yourself a Baptist. That's all. Um, the the. You know, so many people say, well, we need to have a centralized structure that can do this, that, and the other thing. You mean like Rome? Uh, you mean like the Anglican Church? Uh, you mean like the Episcopalians with their gay bishops? Uh, I mean, this really accomplishes something? Not really. Um, and of course, what should be the first question? Um, Tom Askell got to it right. The real issue here is an unregenerate church membership. It's it's self-appointed, self-called pastors in churches that don't have elders, that do not have any type of, uh, of situation where you have internal accountability. Um, it's it's com completely discernible from a biblical perspective, um, but that pe but people are still willing to go, you know, I'm, I think we'll just over—let's just forget about this, um, this um, uh, conviction that people in the past have had. Uh, that there are these offices in the church and that you, you're not supposed to have this hierarchy and stuff like that. Hey, the fact of the matter is the vast majority of Southern Baptists have never even given thought to ecclesiology. So why shouldn't they want to abandon it? I mean, let's just be honest. Um, the 95% of Southern Baptists have just simply accepted whatever ecclesiology they were handed when they were, were a kid. They've never thought about it. They've read over verse, but they've been hit in the head over and over again by the, the, uh, the, uh, the apostles appointed elders in the churches and, and you know, all, all that stuff is like right on by because you don't have much in the way of interaction going on. And so uh, I'm not overly shocked that people would be willing to abandon an ecclesiology they didn't know they had in the first place. I mean, if you didn't have any investment, I was talking with this one guy who gets me in trouble all the time. Um, so I won't mention who he is uh, because I try not to get him in trouble all the time, and he tries to get me in trouble all the time. But anyways, I was mentioning uh, a similar context where a Southern Baptist, well, he was mentioning to me a similar context where a Southern Baptist was fundamentally arguing against original sin. And we've seen amongst the traditionalists that there is really... Um, a, a deep semi-Pelagian, really there isn't any original sin concept. A federal headship? Are you kidding? And so they're just left looking at Romans 5 going, I don't, I don't know what's going on there. It's just really weird. And I would say, functionally, the vast majority of Baptists I know of, excluding Reformed Baptists, 
including some, but excluding the vast majority of Reformed Baptists, um, do not believe in original sin. Um, they believe in the age of accountability because they don't believe in original sin. The, the two don't go together, in case you have ever really tried to figure that part out. Um, they don't believe in original sin, and as a result, fundamentally, um, there is no grounds for their having a deep commitment to the imputed righteousness of Christ. They don't see covenant relationships. They don't see Christ as the head of a new humanity. They, that Romans 5 is just a, a, a mystery, mysterious babble to them. And so the idea of union with Christ, election, the imputed righteousness of Christ, this all stands and falls together. And unfortunately, for the large majority of Baptists, they do not have a coherent systematic theology. So they have no commitment to it. So if something comes along and all of a sudden it's a crisis, well, okay, uh, that solution sounds good. Let's go with it. But that solution's against what your statement of faith has said all along. Let's rewrite it. There you go. And that's what we see happening. Uh, that's what's that's what's going on. Um, 